I'm the director of the Minimally Invasive Cranial Surgery Program at The Ohio State University. Well, minimally invasive surgery is very important uh, because that brings less morbidity for patients. Uh, image guidance helps to lead us like directly to like a deep lesion inside the brain and uh, go through the pathway that will cause less damage uh, to the brain tissue. Sometimes have large hematomas inside the brain and the uh, traditional technique is to perform a large craniotomy that in general the neurosurgeon's standard way would do a craniotomy the size of the hematoma and with this type of technique doing minimally invasive you can do a small craniotomy small incision in the skin and then uh, expose just a small area of the brain and using guidance or if it's a large tumor or a large hematoma you don't really need the image guidance but you just drop your uh, cylinder dilator inside and you can evacuate the hematoma completely using, using a very small door of, of entry. Well, it's no question as they will uh, uh, have less damage on the brain tissue because you're not creating your own damage to get into the uh, problem. And uh, in general, they will recover much faster than the standard technique. The use of uh, regular retractors uh, if you can imagine, it's just a blade. So when you go deep into the brain, usually you need to use two or sometimes even three to create your room and space like a corridor to go through the brain tissue into the target. So the blade retractor requires the blade to go on each side and you can have the brain herniation uh, through the, the corridor and that blocks your view. With this type of retractor that is like a cylinder, you can really dilate and retract the brain completely 360 degrees around and you avoid the brain tissue to go into the corridor and block, to block your view. Well, definitely saves uh, time because you're dealing with a smaller type of surgery. You're going directly to the point, doing your surgery. When you're done, you just have a smaller craniotomy to close and you have a smaller incision to finish, and you're done. So it definitely saves time. Well, it's the same principle, because you're doing a less trauma. You're doing less trauma to the patient. And it's from all levels. Uh, you're doing smaller incisions. You're doing smaller craniotomy. And you're doing less manipulation to the brain, which is the most important. Actually, even if you had to do a big incision, a big craniotomy, still, if you had only the advantage of doing less trauma to the brain, that would be wonderful. And you can combine all of them in this type of technique. And these patients then in recovery, they feel better in comparison to the others, like much earlier. So uh, they have a tendency to get out of the hospital even earlier, and they feel better earlier. Well, it's, I mean, just by saving time and few days less in, in, a, in the hospital, that's uh, great. That saves a lot of money, that's for sure. Well, definitely the deep ones are the ones that it's easier for us to see the difference. Because to get very deep into the brain without an appropriate retractor, it's difficult. If they are very superficial, it's, it's controversial because then at that point you can you have at the surface, don't, and then you don't need that much of retractor, uh, retraction uh, to get to the lesion. However, if sometimes it can be uh, deep, but just for a few millimeters, few centimeters, and you can still use this type of technique to um, maintain the brain retracted so you can do your resection, even if it's like uh, relatively close to the surface. I've been using this uh, type of retractor for um, evacuations of uh, hematomas in the brain, uh, tumors inside the ventricle, uh, different types of tumors inside the ventricle, like including colloid cysts, they are more common, and some other rare uh, tumors like a central neurocytoma and some other lesions and tumors in the ventricle. Uh, diseases in, located in the parenchyma of the brain, which, uh, for instance, are cavernomas, they're like a nodules of uh, like blood cells, like vessels, they're formed in the deep portions of the brain. They're actually ideal for this type of resection because you can go with image guidance directly to the point 
and perform resection of them. And we are also using for uh, metastasis to the brain as well as uh, malignant gliomas. Yeah, sometimes you can have uh, lesions or tumors located in very, very difficult areas to reach with the regular technique. Uh, for, for instance, uh, lesions that are close to the thalamus uh, and the upper part of the brain stem, or I've done, for instance, for uh, lesions located in the uh, superior peduncle of the cerebellum. Those are very difficult areas to reach safely. And uh, if you do with the traditional retractors, you may uh, need a little extra retraction than you would like to do. So this technique allows you to go directly to those points, causing less uh, damage to the neuro tissue. Yeah, that more and more neurosurgeons are seeing as an advantage. In the beginning, the resistance is related to the fact that you may be doing minimally invasive, but not doing the same job. The way I see it that is that uh, I can deliver the same effectiveness with less morbidity. So that's what we call minimally invasive. I believe in a few years, that'll be the standard way to go. Oh.